<laughs> I deep dived on you. Okay. And I found out that you were actually the conservative kind of standpoint host on The View for two years. Yeah. That's insane. <laughs> If I'm not wrong, because I don't know too much about The View, but I've uh -huh. seen definitely like some controversial clips online or on YouTube, yeah. that's a primarily liberal audience. Oh yeah, it is. That whole show started and it was it's called The View because it's supposed to be five different viewpoints. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much one viewpoint. That's what I picked <laughs> up. Yeah, there's usually like one token conservative. So I was that conservative for two years on the show. But going into it, you knew that yeah. you were going to be that kind of token target. Yeah. yeah so I what did. made you accept that job? <laughs> Allie, I tried to turn that job down Are you serious? multiple times. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. I didn't even, I, I wasn't even looking for that job. I actually didn't even know I was up for that job. Wait, really? Yeah. They had asked me to just do a fill-in guest co-host a couple times. And I'm like, well, that's kind of scary, but that's kind of fun. Like, I've never done that. I want to do that. So I filled in as a guest, I think two times or three times, a couple months apart. And then got a call saying, we're looking for a new co-host for the season. And <laughs> we want to offer you the job. I was like, what? What is happening? And so Val and I prayed about it. And I was like, I know they talk so much politics on the show and I'm not comfortable with that. So no. And then they came back and they were like, we're actually switching it. It's going to be more pop culture, more evergreen topics. We're not really going to talk about politics that much. Uh, and it was like, okay. And then I was like, well, I live in LA and I'm not moving to New York. So no. And they said, We'll fly you back and forth every week. We'll, pay, we'll pay for the tickets every week. The biggest open door. And I was like, <laughs> okay. And then I was like, but I'm already doing Fuller House and I have a contract with Hallmark Channel and Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. Like I, and they were like, yeah, don't worry. We'll work with the schedule. So if you have to leave for a couple weeks to go film a movie, we're totally fine. We'll have another guest host come in while you're gone, but then you just come back. Like they just kept, upping the ante, like everything I tried to say no to, they had a solution for it. Oh my gosh, we so And so at this. that point, Val and I kept praying about it. And then I'm like, I, I think God is calling me to do the show. I think he wants me to be there because I really don't want to do it. And yet they're answering every, every um, thing that we're putting their way. And so that's why, that's when I eventually was like, okay, let's try this. And I said, yes. And it was so scary to say yes. And it was a really hard show to do, but I'm really grateful that I did it. It grew me a lot. Yeah. It's so, it's so crazy because as you're talking, I'm thinking about my own personal life and you know, we're in the election year. And so things are already a little bit touchy. And I think about even having a conversation with somebody in private that doesn't have a similar viewpoint to me. And it's not that I don't respect what they have to say, but I just don't feel like getting fired at 24 seven. Yeah. And I can't imagine dealing with that on such a public yeah. scale. And I know for me, I used to get so much anxiety when people would have an opposing standpoint because I didn't have a reason to back up why I believed what mm. I believed. And so when they would come at me with questions, I would just get mad and I'd act out of my emotion. Right. But that would invalidate me too, acting in my yeah. emotion. And so what I really want to know is you knew you were going on the view that mm -hmm. you were going to be the token conservative. Yeah. How did you prepare for each and every episode? Girl, I have never prepared like I have prepared for that show in my life. Okay. So I would do hours and hours of homework every single night. You basically get a packet of about 80 topics the night before because they're all current events. They keep moving and changing whatever happens in the news cycle. So I would, I would spend probably a minimum of four hours each night researching all 80 topics so I could understand what I didn't understand. Yeah. And then on the morning of with the hosts and the producers, they break it down. We go through all 80 topics and then pinpoint maybe – seven or eight of those that we're actually going to discuss on the show. It's like a pop quiz. Yeah. So um, 
So it was really challenging, but I did as much prep work as I could. Felt like I was in college or in high school or whatever every night. And then I had a couple really incredible, really faithful friends that were with me by phone every morning. So when I knew the decided on topics, if I, and politics is not my strong suit, or at least it wasn't then. I know a whole lot more about politics now, but I was really learning politics while I was doing that show because we just weren't a family that ever talked about politics at home. So I had a couple of very faithful friends in my life that committed to that one hour in the morning of my prep time, because that's about what you get. You get your makeup and hair time, and then you, and but during your makeup and hair time, you have like about an hour and a half before you go Girl, on live TV. I know TV. this was the Lord that calls you to this because this is <laughs> no. so stressful. I know. You go on live TV, and during that hour and a half, I would go back while they're doing my makeup, and I would, there were like two people, but one person in particular that I would talk with him through all of the topics I didn't feel confident in and he would help me find my words and he was a a historian. So he knew so many political facts and then I could take that information, write it in on my notes to help back up my argument. What was so, what I admire so much about you being on that show too is not only were you a conservative, but at this point you were really strong in your relationship with Christ. You were Mm -hmm. going on there and representing literally the image of Christ while you were on that show. And I, I'm not going to lie when I was researching deep diving you, I watched some interviews, like kind of like debates. Uh-huh. I watched some debates with you from the show <laughs> yeah. and they got pretty fiery and honestly they got pretty nasty. And you, as far as what I watched, you did such a beautiful job of holding your composure and reacting out of love in a sound mind. And I'm not saying you're perfect because I've never, I haven't watched the whole thing, right? None of us are, but I'm just saying that you did such a beautiful job of that. And I think that that's something I would love to talk about next is when you are going through so much public hate, Mm -hmm. how do you continue to bear the image of Christ in front of thousands of people? Yeah, I know. I think in the, it's it's easier for some of us than others because some of us have fiery spirits more than others. Some of us are much more quiet or reserved in that way. And you you have different reactions when you're put under pressure. So we, you know, they talk about fight or flight. Like, do right. you do you fight? Are you ready to go for it? Or do you want to take off? Like right. you want to hide and you want to run. And I would say I am a flight person. Really? I don't love conflict. I'm not afraid of it. I, I, I like resolution. So I'm always happy to have the discussion because I like directness and I like resolution. But I'm not like my my gut reaction is not to fight with people. <laughs> I want to take yeah. a hike. So with that, I think my disposition helped me in that when people really come at me, um, I don't get super riled up. Like I don't put on the boxing gloves. So it takes more composure in that I have to like take a breath, you know, breathe through this, think about what I want to say and then have the conversation or the reaction. So I think in that way, there's uh, just my innate humanness and the way God built me that I, I, you know, have a calmness about me when it comes to that kind of stuff. But I love in the Bible, I'm going to share this with you. Let me grab it. And wait, I'm so curious to see if you're looking up the same back verse. Back in I first just thought Peter, of- are you going to, it's back in first Peter. It's no, three no, no, no. Okay. Undeserved suffering. But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and respect, Mm. keeping a clear conscience so that when you're accused those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it's better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. 
So I love, like, we know we're going to come into conflict with people. Mm -hmm. It might be in direct uh, conversation with someone. I mean, it might, uh, there's all kinds of situations, but we know conflict is always going to happen. And God says, be ready, be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks. And we know that that defense really is the hope that is within us and that is Jesus, and do it with gentleness and respect. So God calls us to those words. And God, even if you don't, if if you are like a person that wants to get up and fight, and that gentleness and respect is hard for <laughs> you to get to, just remember, you have full power of that gentleness and respect through the Holy Spirit. Yes. If you are in Christ, God gives it to you through the th- fruit of the spirit. He gives you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. So you have it if you ask for it. That's through God's strength, not your own.